Good evening, ghouls and chronic masturbators. It's me, the mummified corpse of Boris Karnoff. I come to you once again, as I do every October season. It's really the only season where I can go out and walk around in public without people pointing and freaking out at me. I brought my old friend Vincent Price. Would you like to say something, Vincent? Yes, thank you, Boris. We come to you once again. I've paused my normal Vincent Price Halloween special to bring you an advertisement for an even better Halloween special. It's a great Halloween special, actually, by your friends at Another Miserable Podcast. Take it away, boys. Wait, wait, Boris, Vincent, before you go, how have you been handling the quarantine? Oh, you know, me and Boris have been shacked up, and quite honestly, I'd really prefer it if Boris put on some pants every now and then. I can't help it. I love the way the breeze feels around my nether regions. I'm I'm guessing you've been eating a lot of dishwasher salmon. Oh, yes, I make dishwasher salmon every Wednesday. I try to get Boris to eat it, but he's... Constantly just eating Totino's pizzas like it's going out of style. The pepperoni version is the best one. <laughs> Boris, I, I do got to say before you go, man, I loved you in Abbott and Gisela Meet the Killer, Boris Karloff. I wish you had a few more scenes in it, but you were very good. Jesus Christ, I forgot I was even in that movie. <laughs> well, you declined to be in Abbott and Gisela Meet Frankenstein, which you think would be kind of, you know, right up your alley. But it's okay, I get you wanted your, your name in the title, your own film. Listen, Zach. <laughs> In the last 20 years or so of my life, I don't remember what the hell I was doing. I was in the terror, for God's sake. No (laughs) one could understand that film. Not even (laughs) Roger Corman. Uh, Welcome to another Miserable Podcast 2020 Halloween Special. It's Halloween, isn't it? Oh. Uh, how's it going, guys? Great. All right. I know it's Halloween because I carved pumpkins yesterday. You did. I know it's Halloween did. because mm-hmm. I'm sitting in a dark room. <laughs> Bright and early here in SoCal, 7.15 a.m. as I am speaking, 9.15 a.m. over in Arkansas. It's bright and sunny where Chris is right now. You know, guys, I wanted to, I really wanted to vote an entire episode to the, the 1998 classic Practical Magic, but I, I don't think you guys would be down with that, so... Oh god, I could talk about that kitchen for forever. <laughs> it's the best kitchen in any movie. I hope it has lamps. <laughs> but let's face it, there's nowhere to go but down after that intro. <laughs> now that I've <laughs> psyched you guys up for the show, we're gonna have some Halloween fun today, COVID or not. Um, so welcome, thank you so much for joining us. It is another miserable podcast. My name is Zach. As always, I am joined by my two very miserable, very Halloweeny co-hosts, Chris Pistol, Professor Casey. The scariest thing about 2020 is 2020. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, it, this is a weird Halloween because it there's like restrictions on halloween but we have like some of the best halloween output candy wise and movie wise that we've had in a couple years which is a little shitty you know it 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 makes me sad because i was listening to our episode last year and in that episode casey that you were talking about how you didn't get to live your best halloween life and well (laughs) surprise (laughs) 
Oh. You had no idea. Uh, the universe said, how about we give you something to cry about on Halloween? <laughs> uh. Oh, man. If only you knew what was going to happen this year, I would have made sure to hit like every haunt last year. And that's kind of what we're going to talk about in this yeah. episode. We're going to talk about some of our Halloween traditions growing up, some of our favorite costumes, some of our favorite haunts, some candy. We talked a little bit about candy last year, so we're just going to run the Halloween gamut, so to speak. Not talk about movies so much, maybe here or there. Um, I know there are a lot of new releases that have come out over the last month or so, but don't worry, we'll we'll get to them ne- first episode next month. We will uh, we will make up for it. But I'll yeah, we got to round uh, that stuff yeah. up. A little I'll throw bit. a few recommendations out at the end, just briefly. But uh, I, I assume by great Halloween Halloween content, Casey, you're referring to who the the new classic Who Be Halloween. Oh, of course, of oh, course. I, I've made it through about ten minutes. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it was a marathon. Here's the thing. It's uh, in my Letterboxd review, which you guys can check out if you'd like. Uh, (laughs) I, it's one of the most in-your-face Halloween movies I've ever seen, but it like not necessarily in a good way. Like it's just, I, I, I do. It did make me want to just ride out on a bicycle and just tell everyone Halloween's upon us. Um, (laughs) (laughs) If if most Halloween movies are like a traditional Halloween decoration. Then who be Halloween are those like inflatable yes. minion Halloween direct uh, decor- decorations? If that's a good analogy. Mm-hmm. As mm-hmm. an unabashed mm-hmm. fan of like '90s Adam Sandler movies, like Happy Gilmore, Billy Madison, which is like one of my big guilty pleasure movies, uh, Wedding Singer, but that's just a great film in general. I was I enjoyed the references to his older work, and I loved the gag where um, June Squibb wears like t-shirts with dirty jokes on throughout the entire movie and she doesn't understand <laughs> what they mean that was yeah. my favorite part <laughs> okay if you get yeah. june squibbed you get june squib to wear a t-shirt that says i shaved my balls for this that's funny How as hell i'm sorry woman? she's 90 something uh, i thought so she, they got they put her in a t-shirt that said i shaved my balls for this <laughs> <laughs> she's I guess like, it, uh, if that does it for you, sorry. She's she's on a she's on a, like a news report. They're talking about like a Halloween festivities in this uh, town, and oh man, it, this movie's a little dated because every all the reporters in this news report are dressed up as Harley Quinn. Um, that was kind of funny. The one joke that, or at least like the the one section of the movie that I enjoyed was just the scenes with Tim Meadows and yeah, Maya Rudolph, just because that, Tim Meadows is fucking hilarious. Tim Meadows is, like, showing himself as being, like, actually one of the funniest, like, post members of uh, Saturday Night Live and deserves more work. Oh, he should yeah. be in everything. It's kind of weird that he's not. Yeah, I... Yeah, he's, uh, he's very funny. Really there like are some work. There are some funny moments here. Um, but, yeah, if if I shaved my balls for this isn't funny to you, then you're probably not going to have a good time. You know, you know what's funny, Zach, is I did shave my balls for this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sponsored by Manscaped. Uh, my other podcast is sponsored by Manscaped. Uh, <laughs> so if uh, if any of these listeners would like a fat discount at Manscaped.com, use code MMM for 20% off plus free shipping. <laughs> you know, Casey, you guys can have the Manscaped promotion sponsorship. I want a Shudder sponsorship. So, sponsorship. so Shudder, if you're listening, we plug you guys like every episode. <laughs> yeah, that's why we're not going to get it. Because yeah, they're like, you, you'll do it fandom. anyway. <laughs> They're not giving us any more money. Zach is just a diehard fanboy for Shudder. They're like, you guys are putting our kids through college at this point, so why should we pay? Uh, no, um, things have been good on Shudder. Uh, they've got WNUF Halloween special, like we told people was upcoming on our last podcast. I hope that you guys have watched it if you haven't seen it yet. Um, because I actually think less of you as a person if you haven't seen the WNUF Halloween special. And it sounds like I'm kidding right now, but I'm really not. I think you're a horrible person if you don't watch this movie. And there is a new something new coming out with uh, related to WNUF Halloween special. Do you have more details on that, Casey, than I can give? Because you're the one that told me about it. Well, there's an upcoming movie that's going to have the paranormal investigators in it. Uh, It's part of this new weird kind of streaming thing, and it's not going to be out for a while. So as soon as I get more details, I'll talk about it. But it's kind of like buried in a pile of information right now. So I don't have it like digestible for everyone, including myself yet. Mm. (laughs) So I will let everyone know. And uh, since we're talking about Shudder, I will say uh, I watched the Mortuary Collection last night. And full disclosure, this is a film that the company I'm employed by did some post-production work on. So, disclaimer. Corporate but I, chill! I knew about this film before I started working at this company. 
It is fantastic. Uh, one of the best horror anthologies I've seen in a long time. Um, definitely reminded me of, like something Mike Doherty would do a bit. Um, it's not quite to the level of Trick or Treat, but like what is, but it's very, very good. Uh, so if you guys want to check that out, uh, I don't have like a full detailed review for you right now, but it's really good. I gave it about, I would give it probably four stars between four, four and a half. If there was a 4.25, it would be a 4.25. Tell me the name of it again. The Mortuary Collection. It is really good. It looks, uh, okay. the cinematography is, is gorgeous. It looks great. Uh, it has a really great wraparound narrative. The individual nice. stories, there are four. They're good. They're solid. They're entertaining. There's some great effects. I, I really enjoyed it. I think you guys have a fun time. I'm saying it now and not our episode next month where we're going to catch up on a lot of reviews because it is, it does feel, it's not like Halloween themed per se, but it, it goes right in line with something you'd want to watch on Halloween. It's, it's so also, I let you guys know about it beforehand. It's like the hot thing everyone's talking about it's right great. now. So, it's great. It's yeah. great. Mm-hmm. The poster gives me a. Poster gives me like a uh, something wicked this way comes vibe. It's 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 got a great color palette. I can tell you right now, it is on my best of list uh, for 2020 so far. So you liked it more than Scare Package, is what you're saying? Oh, I liked it a lot more than Scare Package. <laughs> this maybe, was this maybe, was maybe you need to double the amount of segments. This was in it. this was close to a four and a half for me. I really like this movie. Yeah. It's it's way up there for me. Uh, my best of this list this year. I I think hey, it's and I'm not hey. just saying that. Because the company I worked for did some uh, uh, post work on this. It's really, really good. So please, nice. please uh, yeah. check it out, guys. You will dig it. Yeah. It is in the queue. Yes. Let's um, let's get into Halloween, guys, because it is a Halloween episode. Woo. It is our Halloween special. Ah. So, um, you know, I think one thing that uh, the quarantine has shined a light on this year is kind of Halloween, like lawn displays, front displays, house displays. And I kind of wanted to ask you guys, growing up, like, did you go all out decorating your houses? Were you kind of limited by your parents? Um, like, what do you do now? Like, so, because I think that's one of the cool things, since it's harder to do, like, home, like, haunts, like, walkthrough haunts because of social distancing and stuff. It's tricky. A lot of people are just doing displays you can drive by or walk up to. Oh, I'm seeing, I, Arkansas is saying, fuck you, because I've seen multiple, like, walkthrough haunted houses yeah. that are popping out. Some people are doing that, but I do think it's, it's trying to better light and just... The art of just making a really cool Halloween display, like you make a nice, you know, Christmas light display, yard mm-hmm. display, and I've seen a couple really awesome ones just in the Burbank area this year out in ca- Southern California. So I just wanted to ask you guys, growing up, how did you decorate your houses? Uh, mine was pretty mundane because I would usually have a really horrifying costume inside when I was uh, handing out candy, and uh, I would scare the living shit out of the kids. <laughs> uh, more more lately, you know, like we have skeletons, we have some cool decorations out. Um, but uh, as a kid, it was pretty mundane, you know, some cardboard decorations here or there. I used to have this really awesome skull that you would stick on the windows that was uh, the bestel, uh, the beastle skull, uh, classic uh, Halloween decoration. And uh, yeah, I would I would concentrate more on not being home and being out trick-or-treating and stuff. But when I was passing out candy, uh, other than the time that I made myself look like a, uh, a mannequin and, uh, laid out in the lawn chair to scare the shit out of people. Uh, uh, nice. Didn't really do a whole lot to the house other than skeletons and cardboard decorations, your basic stuff. I have neighbors that go all out though. Uh, I have a whole leather face butcher shop across the street and then I have this very Hellraiser S scene that also includes skeletons on a swing set two doors down, uh, which is pretty awesome. Uh, those guys go all out. If every you year. like uh, owned your house and you didn't it, like, like, would you like go all out? You think Casey, if you had the budget? Mm-hmm. I think I would make my neighbors mad at me, honestly. I think we would all go out all out if we had the budget. <laughs> yeah. Sure. I mean, what, what did you do kind of Chris growing up? How did you guys decorate outside? It was, very, inside. It, it was it was very general like inside we just had some um you know like a light up jack-o'-lantern and then also i would uh and i still have like three of these but we had those uh, mcdonald's chicken nuggets in the halloween costumes yes the toys that you would get in the happy meals and i still have three of those that i and i've like I've, I've kind of taken some of my favorite halloween decorations from our house like i still have that jack-o'-lantern that has a little light bulb in it put that in the window remember one year those me and my McNuggets mom like, put a, after. Uh, yeah, I remember one year I put in uh, our, 
uh, me and my mom outside put like a, a white bed sheet over our lamppost and then drew a little face on it just to have like a little light up ghost in the, in the thing. But then of course it rained as it tends to do in October. Yeah. And the, the Sharpie yeah. face melted onto the ghost sheet. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, we did a few different things growing up. As far as inside decorations, I do have some Happy Meal in the toys. Well, not Happy Meal. I had a lot of the... I had four of the... Growing up, I got four of the, like, Simpsons Treehouse of Horror Burger King toys. And one year, like, like, maybe four or five years ago, I decided to buy the rest of the set on eBay. <laughs> so I have those up in my house, and I always put those So, up. Zach, were you shocked at how many there actually yes. were in the set? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some of them still light up. You kind of have to like twist them to like, there's like a little thing oh, where like yeah. a gravestone will spin around. Some of them still light yeah. up. Most of them don't, but it's, it's cool to have those as far as uh, an, an inside. We'll, we'll, we'll put up a couple, you know, skeletons that hang this year. We have, you know, a little trick or treat sign on the mantle. We have a uh, groom and bride, uh, wedding skeletons that are like hanging above the fireplace and they're holding hands. Um, we have, so we have a few different things. Uh, we, we tend have, to keep uh, stuff year round uh, because we buy a lot of black cat themed Halloween mm-hmm. stuff and we have black yeah. cats. So that kind of stuff just stays. If you're looking for yeah. black cat Halloween stuff and there's a cost plus world market near you, they have a bunch of black yeah. cat Halloween stuff. Just <laughs> shout out yeah. to a cost plus world market. Yeah. But, but uh, outside we, so we used to put up like a big spider web with like a spider um, we would put up like I for a while I had this like kind of I don't know it was like thirty dollar Grim Reaper thing that we would hang kind of above. So my house there's a couple steps to go uh, up to my door and ring the doorbell, and we got this like little Grim Reaper kind of looks like the mask from Scream that he would like kind of yeah. hang above this uh, uh, yeah. area right when you go up the steps, and he was motion sensor. So when you would go, he would like come down and make some noise, and his hands and like head would like bob up and down. Um, yeah, we have disgustingly cool. realistic bats like that, but they don't move, and I just wish that they did. Uh, yeah, they're so furry. So yeah, we would do that. We put out a check <laughs> lantern. Um, but the one uh, kind of thing with a uh, decoration that was there always when I was a kid is we would put out on a s- chair. We would make a little faux crypt keeper that we would stuff with newspaper. Uh, if you guys follow the Instagram account, like I think last year, maybe even the year before. I tweeted a mask of the uh, the Crypt Keeper mask that I have, which is from like the late mid late nineties. It's kind of a rare mask, and which Casey has bugged me about giving. To him. I want that mask. It's also the mask <laughs> that the professional wrestler Crypt the Keeper wrestled in. So uh, uh-huh. I I really want that mask. Yes. So we would stuff his head with like newspaper. We would prop him up on this chair. He, we would put him in like an Elvira like sweater vest T shirt. <laughs> <laughs> nice and with jeans and kids used to always think there was someone in there so i always wanted to one year like dress up as him and scare them but i never did it uh i should have but so he was there for a while eventually we kind of it was just getting harder to keep him up and like the skeleton bones that we would have sticking out of his like arms were just kind of not doing so well so we did now we do a headless horseman and we have this like glow up kind of orange jack-o'-lantern pumpkin that we bought at cvs that's actually really good quality a few years back and we put that on his lap and so it's kind of like a headless horseman little dude i've got i've got a story to share about someone doing that with their costume uh you know the laying out pretending to be a dummy Mm -hmm. yeah okay there was a guy that did that uh but see the thing is he did it every year so you kind of knew it was coming he would lay out on a lawn chair uh and he had a freddy krueger mask on but he had a rainbow clown wig over the freddy krueger mask for some reason (laughs) Uh, But it looked hilarious and he would lay down. And as soon as you said trick or treat, he would jump up and scare everyone and give you candy. My friend, Philip, it happened every year. He had never been down that street before. And I, and I told him, I'm like, Phil, 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 this guy's going to jump up and scare you. Be ready. And I told him multiple times. I'm like, all right, be careful. As soon as we say trick or treat, this guy's going to jump up. So, of course, we say trick-or-treat. Phil screams on the top of his lungs and runs all the way across the street. Fucking tremendous. I love it. The guy got his reaction he wanted. But (laughs) I gave him... I was a good friend. I gave him warning. He just was not listening to me. (laughs) Yeah, it sounds like me and you had a similar um, experience of... uh, Basically, once you reach the age where you realize it's not that cool to trick-or-treat anymore, you graduate into... Well, I got this fucking Michael Myers mask in this costume. I'm not going to let that go to waste. So I just sit out on right. the front porch 
with a with a uh, box of candy in my Michael Myers mask and and costume, just holding the bag of candy, waiting for people to come up and don't even do anything. And this is as like they're about to reach into the bowl to grab the candy and then walk away, just freaking. <laughs> Did you guys ever try and make like your own haunt? No, no. Um, someone in my neighborhood did, and it was the most pathetic thing I've ever seen. So I Same. never did Similar it. Similar thing. You, yeah. You, uh, the most pathetic thing you've ever seen is the one I did with my. <laughs> okay, Zach. Zach. <laughs> this guy. Okay, he came. He came out dressed like an executioner, which was basically an executioner. Already better than what we did. Oh, oh. Trust me. The highlight of this was when he pointed and said, "Behold the spirits." Okay. It was Kleenex blowing in the wind. Behold the spirits. And then me and my friends just looked at each other. And for years after that, whenever we saw Kleenex, we look at each other and say, behold the spirits. It became a running gag. Uh, yeah, it, this was an adult doing this. Um, and, and my parents are like, he just wasn't trying to scare the kids. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I think he just <laughs> sucks at Halloween. I, you know. The one that was in my neighborhood was like, I don't even think his parents knew what he was doing. I think, I, and I don't even know if he like did this on Halloween, but I just remember going over to his house before Halloween in the afternoon and him being like, hey, I'm building a haunted house in my garage. And I was like, okay, let's take a look. <laughs> and I went in and he had just like poured some ketchup on the wall, like just some, just some, to, some Hunt's tomato ketchup, just poured that on the wall, <laughs> just drizzled it on there and then put like a toy skeleton that he had underneath the lawnmower and then may have like done like one other thing, little thing like that, and that was it. And it was like no decorations, just it's just his garage with like some ketchup on the wall and a skeleton underneath Aww. the lawnmower. And it's like, oh, you tried, you tried. Yeah, no, mom and dad have no, no idea you're doing this. Yeah, they're not with ketchup on the wall. They're, they're gonna they're beat your ass when they find that ketchup. Yeah. On the wall. <laughs> there was one Halloween display, uh, like a like a walkthrough display, growing up, like right around the corner uh, from the street I lived in, like just right around the corner. And as a kid, I was terrified to go in there because I would walk by and I would see some dude. I feel like he was dressed up like a mummy <laughs> or something, but he was like, scaring the ki- like kind of ushering the kids in and scaring the kids in. And I just remember like crying, not wanting to go in. And I, but my parents would be like, don't be a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> not like they didn't say that, but they're like, oh, our kid is such a bitch. Um, uh, so for years, which I would is not what go. I would say yeah. <laughs> for years, I would not go in. But one year I finally did. And it was cool. I remember seeing some like uh, fake dead bodies. They had like a cool, like a little like scene of. Uh, I, I I feel like it was like like on kind of gurneys, and there were some bodies that had fallen off, and there it was cool. It was pretty well done for a little home hot. Uh, See, but they, though, you growing up in Burbank, you get like the good home hot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah, but you get spoiled. The funny thing is, I they moved away like a few years after that, and I, the urban legend was that the people that moved in after them found like fake dead bodies in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is oh, awesome yeah, if that's true um but so one year i think like the first year where we were like like maybe six 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 seventh grade and we're like we're too old to trick-or-treat we were like let's let's do a haunt let's make our own haunt and we were really excited about it we bought like a fog machine and we did it in my friend's backyard that's all you was, need that's I, all you need is a fog machine i will say fog is the secret ingredient to a really good haunt display <laughs> but more of that later um uh, one of the secret ingredients um so we made this, it was a, the worst fucking hunt. Uh, we like, there was like no decorations. One of my friend was like hidden in like a doggy house. My role in the house was to pretend to be a trick or treater waiting in line to go through. And then I would be taken by one of my friends. And I Ooh, like, I just remember a, good, a plant. That's a great yeah. idea. It's a good idea, but I was not, a, I was so like obvious about it. I remember just waiting outside, <laughs> just being like, oh my God, you'll know, someone get in line so we can go through this stupid haunt god <laughs> and i was just like yelling to nobody <laughs> you wanted it so when they took you away that everyone would applaud yes kill him yeah. yes yes basically and to top things off it rained that year so we're doing wow. it when it's raining and i remember like one of the first people that went through our house was this like little like five-year-old kid that knew where every one of us was he was like the guy in scream just calling out every single scare and I was like, when I was dragged in, they like, we had built like a hole, like a grave or something. And like my friend grabbed me into the grave and he just like knew where everything was. I think the best scare we had was like on the way out, someone would jump out. But we had like no makeup. It was terrible. I remember mm. like, like leaving Charming. that year and going, well, that was the stupidest thing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> uh, 
Wasn't as good as the one in uh, Burbank around uh, Magnolia Street. No, that one's amazing. No, that one's oh my cool. god! I will talk about that actually. Um, did you guys? Did your school ever put on a haunted house? Because uh, it they it, did. I wish they had. I'm sure LAUSD bans it, but you're not. You're in Burbank, so you're not LAUSD. I I was in Castaic, not LAUSD. Um, we used to have a Halloween carnival every year, which was actually a lot of fun. Uh, we used to have uh, a haunt there. And see, the thing that sucks is it's such a small town. Everyone knows everyone, right? So you go in and most of the people putting this on have no idea what horror movies are or what the uh, what the actual motivation behind the characters they're playing are. Uh, so you go in and there's this guy that actually had really good devil makeup on. And for some reason, he called us all his little tasties, which I thought was strange. <laughs> He's like, oh, look, it's my little tasties. And I'm just like, okay, okay. Then you then you walk over to a table and it's got the severed head gag, you know, where you where you have someone with the hole cut in the table and then like the mirrors around the legs, so it looks like their heads displayed on the table. Uh it was a kid that I knew, so we just kind of look over at him and said, Hey Gene, you look like hell right now, and keep walking, you know. And um then there's a Jason. The Jason decided to move like he was a robot, like an auto animatronic robot. Like he would only swing and then kind of do the robot back into position. I have no idea why he thought Jason would do such a thing. Little weird. <laughs> uh, and it was, it was, uh, it was finished off by the janitor dressed like Frankenstein, um, basically chasing us out of the room, uh, which was kind of amazing uh it was it was actually a side room in the cafeteria that they did this uh, you know so it's it got pretty dark because it had no windows and um that was kind of par for the course like you would go out you would do little cakewalk games you'd have a game where you would throw water filled like heavy ass sponges at teachers faces through a ah. hole in the wall kind of like a dunk tape dunk tank philosophy mm, and awesome. uh it was a lot of fun. You know, you would get people put in prison and they'd have to pay their way out, you know, fun stuff like that. My elementary school did a spring carnival, but I don't think they did a Halloween one. I feel like maybe the high school I went to might have had some Halloween kind of festivities. I mean, we had like a Halloween parade in elementary school where we dress up and just so the parents could come and take pictures of us. And I've go, always, oh, yeah. I've always wanted that. Yeah. Always. We, we had a Halloween parade every year in elementary school, but, um, Anyway, before we uh, drift away from home haunts, I, I do want to give some love this year. Uh, I, I saw some really awesome ones here in uh, Burbank, northern uh, North Hollywood area. There's one called the Rotting Hill Cemetery that really felt like something Disney oh, yeah. would put on. Uh, yeah. You, um, Casey, you don't follow me on Instagram, but I shared some of this on my story. I don't and... have an Instagram. I'm not being an yeah. asshole and not following <laughs> you. I just don't do Instagram. You're missing okay? this good material, man. Uh, I probably should put some uh, of this on the that. NPOS. You need to send me those videos because I wanted to show my girlfriend and I forgot. It was on the story and you didn't watch all of it, dick. I saw. <laughs> you watched like half like, of it. <laughs> that's because I was like, Jesus. ooh, wait, I want to show this to my girlfriend and then something happened and I forgot. I'll, I'll send it to you. I'll send it to you. I, I, uh, it was... Um, it's pretty epic. Casey, um, maybe you shouldn't get on Instagram because apparently <laughs> Zach is taking I know, tally of who's watching his stories. No, I'm, I, <laughs> it's all I have. I know. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Zach it's like, like hmm, he watched that one, but not that one. There was, uh, <laughs> it was pretty cool because they had like, so they have different animatronics and the an they actually had like different, like kind of like almost a little show queued up. They have like different lines that are fed and the animatronic to interact with each other. Uh, and it's, so it was kind of something to like, uh, so that it was a really immersive experience. They had the fog rolling in. I really do think fog, if you have a really professional looking home hunt, fog is just like that next level thing to add into it along with some like immersive yes. lighting. And, and if I may, music. as a former as a former salesman, you want a fog machine that has some kind of cooling element to it. You can buy a cheap one and find a hack online where you run it through a cooler and do a cooling effect that way. The reason for that is because hot air rises. So if you really want that cool looking fog that just blankets the ground and you can't see where you're going, you have to have some kind of cooling element involved with it. Mm. Like in the machine itself? 
Either that or you run a tube from the machine into a cooler full of ice and then out a hole and it spits it out that hole as cold. Ah, that I works like that. as well. That's kind of like a like a life hack because we're talking like a $120 fog machine versus like the $30 fog machine, you know, right. so some yeah. people do the hack instead. That was like the only thing that made that pathetic haunt I did with my friends in middle school at least somewhat cool is that we had a fog machine that we bought, but, uh, okay. Um, I sold, I sold a fog machine to Bill Nye, the science guy. Oh, nothing. I gave him <laughs> that pitch. Really? That's, That's awesome, awesome. Yeah, dude. That's awesome. And I'm like, why am I, why am I explaining the science behind this to you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure he's just staring at you like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I'm aware of this. I don't know if you know this, but, uh, I'm kind of a, kind of a big deal in, in the science world. Yeah, this is. This conversation is making me re- remember a couple of haunts I did after I graduated from trick or treating. One was with my um, the theater group that I started to hook up with in high school, and we did a uh, like a hayride haunt. Nice. nice. Basically, like people would ride around the town square um, and stop at different locations, and I was like a mad scientist for some reason. I'm just like in front of city hall, but I'm a mad scientist with my laboratory stuff mixing <laughs> chemicals and having little mini explosions go off around me and then were you was... like part of the experience or were you just like doing the experience for like were you no i was actor? i was part of the i was i was uh the mad scientist oh i thought you were just someone like writing it and you're like dressed as a mad scientist just like doing weird things while they're trying to show you this <laughs> <laughs> like, no, like dude, what is I this guy doing the theater i was in the theater group we put on the haunt oh it was right, our, right. It was our okay, thing yeah. we should do that this year though just try to join random haunts and see if anyone <laughs> says anything and then I mean, uh, uh, one idea was about that and then another one I did was I utilized the Michael Myers mask again. I got a lot of mileage out of my Michael Myers mask in high in high school, and uh, I was literally just part of a, a sort of a makeshift. What like, type of Myers mask did you have? Is the question. It kind of looked more like a part four mask. Like the hair was a uh-huh. little too wild. Um, also, so it was definitely a cheaper one. It was you know just the ones they were making in like the two thousands, the early two thousands. Gotcha. Um, Gosh, Shout out I, to Halloween Part Four. It's the only Halloween like, movie I have watched so far this season. <laughs> underrated. I really like Halloween Part Four. Not hey, perfect. Honestly, but if they did the whole movie in that store scene, I I would love. I think more than anything on the opening. I feel like it has like the most atmospheric opening of any Halloween movie. In the, yeah. It's up there. It's really great. Sure. I I just. Even though Laurie Strode isn't in it, I do love um, Daniel Harris's uh, lead and. Um, her stepsister, I think they're a great like uh, yeah. pair. I just think it gets yeah. lost with the the lynch mob section a bit. It drags it kind of from oh, the God. second to the third act. But I do yeah. think I, I I dig the ending. So I think it's one of the more underrated entries in the series. If I ranked it, it would probably be yeah. I'd have to figure out where to put twenty eighteen, but it's around. I have it like one and three, and then I think four is somewhere after that, uh, and then two is probably below that. But uh, I really uh. like part four. Sorry, I wanted Myself. to finish talking about the. Sorry, I wanted. To yeah, I'm sorry. That was a tangent. Okay. <laughs> but I wanted, to, I wanted okay. to give some love to Halloween. It's, for. it's okay. It's okay. But anyway, the the Michael Myers haunt that I did, or at least the haunt in which I, I dressed like that, basically it was just you know like a some, in someone's sort of backyard who lived in the woods, and they had this like trail through this wooded area, um, and then at the end they made the kids like crawl through this box. <laughs> and then when they got out on through the other end of this like tunnel of just cardboard boxes, the guy was there with like a leather mask, a, a leather face mask on and a chainsaw with oh, no blade, just great. like rearing it up. And then he Love did it. that. They went through like twice and he did that twice. And then the third time they did it, he decided to mix it up a little bit because they were going to be expecting it. And this is the time I decided to just like walk through with them. Like I stayed a little bit further behind to creep them out, but I was just I was like I want to walk through this thing one time, and so I walked through the thing with them. And then right before you get into the box is when he like turned on the chainsaw, and then I just had all of these like kids just start pushing me through the box, <laughs> just like propelling me through it so that I could so that they could like oh, get man. away and like That's shot great. out the other end like a cannon. I love when a haunt like messes with you and you have to like get on all get on that. I was going to say get on all fours, but that sounds wrong. Um, but yeah. you know, like when they mess with their kind of your senses, 
Ah, uh, God. I had a haunt that actually, Zach, I think you might have been with me. Kevin definitely was. Uh, the first time we went to Scare LA, they had one that you had to start off by crawling like that, but they didn't even have anyone to scare you at the end. It was just oh, like. Oh, God. Scare LA, you, man. That that year with like the, the haunt displays they had set up. I imagine. So if you go to like Midsummer Scream and Scare LA, they'll have people that do different haunts, some professional, some like home haunts. They'll yeah. ask people to set up like kind of mini versions of like what they have in store for like this season, whatever their, you know, uh, attraction is going to be. And so they'll put up like miniaturized versions um, at Midsummer Scream. They're actually pretty cool. Scare Olay, which was years ago when we like the first time I think we went to it and they had some of this set up and they were very like minimal. Um, yeah, there was a political split between the two. They used to be the same con, and then we started going right when they were splitting apart and shit was getting fucked up, basically. Yeah, I think we went to Scare LA once before the split, and then yeah. I don't think we went after that. Midsummer Scream is like the place to go to now. But right. um, the facades are always cool, but I remember like they were very, like, not much to see in terms of the actual walkthrough experience. But I will say, there was one house I saw this year, in Burbank, actually, and it's it was a, you know, it, it was well, uh, it was, it was insane. It was something you would see on like the great Christmas light fight. Cause it was like a hybrid Halloween Christmas display and that they built like a castle in front of their house. Um, and it was like all like Halloween like stuff. I'll have to send you guys a video of this. I have not posted this on Instagram, but like it was a big crowd. It was a pretty insane looking house. And they had like Corella DeVille. They had like, uh, the Snow White Witch. They had a gargoyle, um, like from Fanta uh, Fantasia. They had some gravestones and stuff. So it was it was pretty, pretty insane. Uh, like they built like multiple levels of this castle on their house. Um, it, it was clearly something that like come like November, December, they can take out the Halloween stuff and put in more Christmas shit. But it was certainly Halloween themed. But it was cool. It was pretty it was pretty crazy. Um, yeah. So uh, if you're in the SoCal area, look up SoCalHauntList.com. It shows you it's a really great resource. Shows you all the displays in the area walk through whether they're like if there's like a show if it's just like a, if you just drive up um so i highly recommend checking out that if you want to because that's one of the cool things to do this year is check out home displays and if you want to see a documentary on uh home displays haunt displays in southern california check out epic home haunts on amazon prime goes and do a lot of displays one of which rotten apple 907 is like five minutes from my house and uh Ooh. i think compared to a lot of other documentaries there's been haunters there's been American Scream. What is the name is that of that? The, is that the um, one that I was talking about earlier? That's near Magnolia Street. There's a few, but yeah, that one's down like yeah. Chandler, Magnolia, and Burbank. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I went there the and, first year I lived in Burbank, and we got there like half an hour before they opened, which was the right thing to do because the line develops pretty quickly. Oh, it does. It gets Halloween. it gets big. They're not doing a walk through this year but they are doing like kind of like a, it looks i think on socal they have listed like a haunted show so some kind of display nice. with a little show element but they're very featured and i think the one thing That's i cool. like about uh, epic home haunts the documentary on amazon prime is that it really gets into the details and logistics of how you do one of these like kind of pro amateur haunts and what goes into making them they kind of walk it it came out in 2018 and they walk you through like the 2016 and 2017 season and what they did each year and oh, the different yeah. props there. Oh, yeah. They clearly some, have a budget. Yeah. There's some turmoil with Rotten Apple 907. One year, like they, the place where they stored their props, they were hit by like a, a flood. And so a lot of their stuff got damaged and the community came together and helped them out. It's really cool. And it goes into more detail than a lot of these, like, um, uh, like Connors, which came out a few years ago, which is good, but it doesn't go quite into as much detail on the home haunts. And so, and, uh, it was really interesting. So if you guys want to check out kind of the art of making a home hunt, Epic Home Hunts is a great, I think, underrated documentary in that field. Zach, I think you were talking about, did your school do ever do anything like either when you were like younger or older putting on like a haunted house? Because I remember I watched The Guest not too long ago and that the freaking haunted house that they build in that movie uh, yeah. <laughs> in the gym is like... This is the most unrealistic, unrealistic like school production I've ever seen. I feel like, like... What, was the, what was the school's budget for their haunted house? <laughs> I feel like in middle school we might have had some sort of Halloween dance, but I didn't go. Like, so ah. <laughs> I don't remember. I, I'm. I, I feel like they must have done something. I just know we had a Halloween parade in elementary school. That's my main. I watched uh, Idle Hands not too long ago too, and oh, I was like, "Fucking movie. Halloween dance." 
No, my school never did a Halloween dance. That would we be definitely awesome. didn't do one in high school that I remember, but I didn't go to any of the dances. I don't especially, know, guys. Especially if you get the <laughs> offspring to come and play. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah, so when I was really into... little, our school didn't do a... Sorry. When we were little school, when I was really little, our school didn't do like a haunted house thing, but I was like in fourth grade, and they did like a... Uh, basically come in your costume and go from like different classroom, and they had like different games set up, you know, like little kid sort of halloween games but all the teachers i remember all the teachers were dressed up in costumes and that was like really weird to see your like teachers acting like normal people and dressing up <laughs> oh, in halloween gosh. costumes teachers dressing up for halloween is like the best thing ever because because <laughs> you have to t- you can tell they have to toe the line with their costumes usually right and so it's interesting i remember in high school one of my teachers i think he dressed up like i don't know if he was supposed to be like like amadeus mozart uh, but nice. he was clearly like in that period. Oh, oh gosh, I love, I-, I love it's especially like when you're in elementary school and your teacher dresses up. It's hilarious. Was um, he the music teacher? No, he was an English teacher. <laughs> of course, Mr. of McCallum. course not. That would make too much sense. That guy, that guy was awesome. He got a lot of. He c- he clearly kind of carried a lot of anger because he was a young looking guy, not tall, and he always got mistaken as a high school student so like his first day he kind of threw the book down and he was just like come at me and he was like i wrote my like college thesis on professional wrestling what <laughs> little did you know I, that he actually was a student and he pulled no, a catch me if you can he, he was he was a good teacher shout out mr mccallan if you're he listening. pulled a catch me if you can doing on well. first day. Uh, that was, he was like my 11th 12th grade english teacher one of them i think 12th grade anyway let's talk about pro halloween haunts we're talking about Universal and Knots, all that stuff. So let's talk about some of our favorite haunt experiences. Because, Casey, I know you have some uh, some some nuggets that you want to share. Oh, God. Okay, so um, we need to talk about the early days of Halloween Horror Nights here in, uh, here in California. Uh, because if you're listening from anywhere else, uh, you think Halloween Horror Nights, you think of the Florida version, which has been going on forever, every single year. California's had a little bit of turmoil. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's been it's been snake bit since the beginning um, because the first year they did it back in 1986, they used to do the terror tram with people jumping out to scare you while you were riding the tram instead of you getting out of the tram and walking around like you do now. And um, someone first year it happened uh, fell in between trams and was. Uh, crushed to death one of the characters oh, oh god. shit that happened oh god yeah so then they didn't do it for like they six years tell me so about that when i worked for them <laughs> yeah no oh, they're not gonna do that and um uh, so there's maybe six years before they did it again they started back in the early 90s they did it in like 1992 or something like that and then they didn't come back again until 1997 or 98 uh the, so there's big gaps there so I want to talk about the year before another big gap, and that was Halloween Horror Nights 2000, because we are celebrating the 20th anniversary of it, and it was the first Horror Nights that I went to. Um, it was interesting. It was a mix of properties that you will never, ever see have a haunted house now. They had a Buffy and Angel Hellmouth haunt uh, nice. maze. Uh, most of it was goth kids with vampire fangs just hissing at you, but they had they could only afford one of the gentlemen from Buffy, so they had a pretty good gentleman costume in there. Uh, a lot of the stuff that they used was pretty cheap. Uh, they would use off-the-shelf rubber masks a lot more than they do now. They still do it once in a while. Uh, they also had a maze based on WWE's Undertaker, and I know some of my listeners come from my other show, so I wanted to highlight this a little bit. Um, you would go into a funeral house and have, uh, a lot of, they cast a lot of fat guys to play different versions of Paul Bearer, the undertaker's manager. So every once in a while you're walking through a room and you just hear, Oh yes. And, uh, some guy would jump out at you and, uh, you would see, you would see Kane locked in a cage and he'd start swinging a chair at the cage and stuff like that. Uh, you would go into this fenced area that was supposed to represent hell in a cell and you'd have like mankind on the roof of it trying to grab you through the roof because, you know, Undertaker threw mankind off of the hell in a cell. Um, it was a great experience uh, as a wrestling fan. It was also the scariest haunt we went through because they had so many great places to hide people that year. Uh, we also went through a Universal Monsters haunt. 
um, where Dr. Frankenstein broke character to tell my girlfriend to watch her step because she was so scared. Uh, that, that was, that was fun. And then, um, they had the house of a thousand corpses haunt and I missed it and I regret it. It is pretty much the one that came back in later years, but what's important about the 2000 house of a thousand corpses haunt is the movie didn't exist yet. This was an original haunt that Rob Zombie did that inspired him to make the movie. So it had Captain Spaulding nice. in it and stuff, and it had the um, Murder Mayhem Museum. It was basically the Murder Mayhem Museum through the whole thing. And um, I wish I had gone through it. There are oh, videos man. of it online. Uh, there's some really poor quality videos of the Undertaker one that I tweeted in the last week or so. Uh, we'll tweet it again before this episode comes out. And... Um, it was pretty low key, pretty low budget. They had scare zones based on um, the Nightmare Creatures video games, which those are really obscure now, but they were pretty big back then. Uh, so they had one to promote Nightmare Creatures 2, which was coming out at the time. Uh, I believe for PlayStation 1, maybe PlayStation 2. I'm a little foggy with what system was out then. I think PS2 was just about to come out. Uh, and what happened to this is that Vivendi bought Universal right after this. And they decided that Halloween Horror Nights wasn't making a profit. So they shut down Horror Nights for another six or seven years uh, until NBC got Universal. And uh, they started opening up Horror Nights again. So of all the weird shit that's happened from NBC Universal merging, Horror Nights in California actually owes it to them buying universal. So thank you NBC for bringing back what has been a shoddy tradition. We've had not scary farm for years and they never miss a beat, but universal's a lot closer than that. So, uh, we're having less gaps. They've been doing it every year. They have a good track record now. And then COVID hits and it's fucking everything up again. But hopefully next year we'll all be at horror nights together. Chris, you can fly in. And, uh, oh, yeah. we'll all be, we'll all be screaming at whatever haunt they reuse that giant werewolf in again <laughs> and whatever haunt they reuse the bed from, uh, Freddy versus Jason with the person crushed in again, uh, since they love using that so much, but yeah, uh, so 20 years ago, it was pretty dope. Uh, you could ride Jurassic park in the dark. So they turn all the lights off, uh, in oh, the end part you. of the ride and, uh, eventually you just drop down now with all the Jurassic world shit, there's so many screens and lights and stuff. I don't think they could even do that. That'd be interesting. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it was, it was fun. Um, there was no line cause no one wanted to get wet. So we went on it about six times in a row in the oh, dark, man. You know, you might've run into my, my brother used to go to these a lot when he was, uh, like the early 2000s one. So you might've run into him. Yeah. I was too young for it, but I do remember him telling me one year, <laughs> that like because you know when you go to those things they sometimes the lines are close together and he felt yeah. like something hit his like the back of his leg once and he like jumped and freaked out and he turned around and it was someone in a wheelchair uh. <laughs> in one of these spaces uh, but i remember he would come back from these events with like the programs and they look so cool and i know he went to the year that had the undertaker experience so you might have seen him yeah there, casey but uh, maybe, yeah, because, uh, you know, honestly, like their characters that were just roaming were so good. Um, they had people dressed as bushes jumping out of the bushes and stuff, which is so fun. And not a lot of places do that anymore. Yeah. And uh, back then it was a little bit more Wild West as far as getting in your face and touching you and stuff like that than it is now. Uh, so, yeah, you might get grabbed a little. You might get a chainsaw in between the legs a little bit, but it's just a cardboard blade. It's OK. <laughs> may have been circumcised by a chainsaw is what i'm saying oh, but God. now they don't oh, do that anymore dear. yeah the the fans will have to um uh, pull their resources together to uh, buy my plane ticket to fly me out there um we'll start a GoFundMe. yes my my favorite um experience with the uh, universal horror nights was when i worked there and it was the first yeah. time it was actually i had never been there before for halloween horror nights oh, until shit. i actually worked there <laughs> So it was nice. kind of, it was, it was fun. Actually, like I worked there for probably a couple weeks before I actually got to go to the other, or at least like a week or so before I actually got to go to the other mazes to like check them out. <laughs> but, um, man, that was the year you started at Barnes and Noble, right? Yeah, I think it was. 
Yeah, I had been working at Barnes for like a, a couple months, I, I think, before that. I think so I started working did at Barnes you, in the summer. Did you put, so fall. you didn't put Michael Myers on your resume then? No, even though I did get Damn. to play Michael Myers for one night. So basically I was hired in the sort of like late period where they were basically just trying to get um, some extra bodies so that they could have people to fill in for people who didn't show up or were, or were sick. Um, so a lot of the time, were you the person in the robe kind of like pointing people where to go and stuff like that? No, I was never that person. Uh, I was hired as a scare actor. Um, nice. Uh, like they had you basically like in the audition process, they basically just have you come up with a scaring tactic. Like they put a chair in the room and say like, imagine there's a person sitting in that chair and I'll scare, scare them. Um, and they give you like, I think they just give you like one go through. And so, like, most nice. people were, like, you know, growling or screaming at the chair. So I, like, I decided to do something different where I was just, like, I was, like, crawling around and screaming help. Like, I was a, like, person who was mutilated or, or tormented or something. I um, would have started humping it just to see their reaction. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, once I got hired, I was kind of, like, in the, what, the, what they call the scare pool. Well, basically, they will, like... Uh, you'll come you'll come out to the park and they'll come over and say like okay we need a couple people for this role we need a couple people over here we need huh. someone who's this tall kind of a thing and it, if they don't end up use or needing people then you can actually go home and still get paid which is kind of nice uh, but that did oh, not that's happen awesome. that rare that, that did not happen <laughs> to me uh the first night i got hired uh i got put on in as a clown wearing a mask so uh, like a mask of a clown on the tram tour which uh, the first night was a total blowout for me <laughs> because I wear contact lenses and the mask oh, was so shit. tight around the eyes. The mask was so tight around the eyes that my eyes immediately started like watering up from the sweat getting in it. Um, oh. And I one contact I remember you lens telling me out. this story. Yeah, so one contact lens fell out within the first like 15 shit. minutes of being out there. And, you know, normally I can get by with just one contact lens, but the fact that it was like... It was it was so dark where the area that I was in, and my other eye, even though I had my contact in, was just like foggy with sweat. I was like, "Listen, I can't do this anymore. Like, I can't, I can't. I'm gonna hurt somebody, or I'm gonna like lose another contact <laughs> lens, or hurt myself and not be able to get home. So I, I think I just have to be done." So they were basically like, "Okay, that's no problem." So I was just done after about 20 minutes. I called it for the night. No, I, I went oh, home. Oh man. Um, <clears throat> but I came back the next night, and that's when I got picked to be Michael Myers, and uh, that was a better experience in the sense that I I made it through the whole night. Uh, but being Michael Myers fucking hurt. Um, it was mm. physically exhausting. Like some guys, the positions that a lot of these scare actors have to be in are just the most uncomfortable positions. Uh, they're just put through the ringer as far as like their physical putting what they put their physical bodies through i remember a guy who was in um the american horror story maze had to like burst through this mattress and he he was not wearing a shirt and just the act of like rubbing his chest up against this mattress like every 20 seconds like his like chest was like raw by the end of the night um and uh just the the motions that i had to go through with michael myers i had to pop out of a closet and also, like, hit a, a button with my with my uh, elbow that would make, like, a loud noise. Uh, I was, like, beat up by the end of the night. I had, like, bruises on my arm. My shoulder was out of whack from, you know, yanking my arm up with the knife, like, every 20 seconds. Um, it was exhausting. Uh, so the third night I went back, it was so exhausting that I actually called out the, the next night. For, for both jobs and i was like i can't get out of bed i have to relax today <laughs> so but the next time i went back i got lucky enough to be pulled as a clown that just had his face painted and it was on the tram tour and the nice thing with the tram is that you had a lot more experience to just walk around um so this is an experience where people are walking around there are scare actors who their job is to just walk around and run up to patrons who are just walking around and scare them so you have a lot more freedom of movement. You're outside, which is nice. I wasn't wearing a mask. And I took that opportunity that night to uh, go up to one of the, basically like 
the leaders of that area, every area sort of has their own managers and, and different leaders and say like, Hey, uh, it seems like you need more people. Can I just like be in this, be, be in this character for the rest of the show? <laughs> and they were like, yeah, sure. That's no problem. Um, so that's where I stayed for the rest of the time. I, yeah, uh, I remember one... you. I remember you telling me about that. Like, I knew you were doing the clown on the terror tram, and I was mm-hmm. trying to find you and texting you. And there was like forking paths like you could go on. And I guess I went on the yeah. wrong one. And I texted you. I was like, "Where were you?" It was like, "Oh, I was on the other one." I was like, "Ah, oh, shit." Yeah, <laughs> they basically like heard people to basically the first night. I think they, you know, it's definitely a work in progress for a lot of uh, things. They have to like work through um how they're going to do the events and the first night i think they just had one path and they realized it was getting super crowded super quick like people were just getting like bunched up in there so they created a separate path so that they could herd people through one stop them herd through people through another and basically like even it out so that it wasn't getting so crowded um also you get a fair amount of breaks you basically go out there for 30 minutes scare and then you get tagged out by another actor and you can go chill out for 30 more minutes and then just basically just repeat that all night long um but yeah the the most fun night though was um we did a couple of nights at the beginning even though we weren't supposed to we uh snuck into the park um because our tram actually got done 30 or an hour 30 minutes or an hour before the rest of them uh, ended i'm not sure why but they but they did that and we got to sneak into the park uh one night and go through a bunch of the mazes um but then they they decided that we since everybody was doing that they were going to take pity on us and on halloween night uh we all after our uh after our tram ended we we got to all go into the park and and uh do all of the all of the haunts and the employees fuck with you more when they know you're an employee. Yes, they knew we yeah. were coming. Um, they, they, yeah, they knew that we were coming that year. So they, they were like, oh, good, they're coming. So they, they put on their A, a game and scared the fucking shit out of us. And that was the year that they had the Krampus maze, which yeah, by yeah. far was my favorite. Uh, the Texas Chainsaw maze, which was uh, fantastic. And the... Um, Freddy vs. Jason Maze, which I thought was like really cool and really well done. The facade for that Krampus Maze was so good. Yeah, it was. You know, parts of that were what they used for the Undertaker Maze, I think, actually, because they had the house and everything when you walked in. Hmm. So that's like Mm -hmm. a 20-year-old parts of the facade. Probably way older than that. Probably used in like 50 movies. Yeah. And one fun thing about being a scare actor and like getting friends who also were scare actors and uh, you know, I made a lot of friends on that on that uh, gig, and just a lot of cool people, and we had we had a lot of fun. Um, and then the the fun thing about that is that next year when I went back as uh, not a worker but just as a guest, uh, a random uh, scare actor walked up to me. I have no idea who they were, but they walked because they were wearing a mask. But they walked up to me and whispered in my ear, "Hey, Chris." <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> that's great man you know casey you mentioned that one scare actor that was killed in that tram accident i've heard there are ghosts on the back lot did they tell you anything about that chris as a scare actor because i feel like i've heard they, they didn't tell, tell us about any real ghosts they made up this they were telling us this legend of a uh, of a sasquatch that lives on the back lot oh um, i haven't heard which that one. actually which made an appearance one of our last nights and uh, it, it was totally real a totally real ghost sasquatch and and not at all a person dressed up in a sasquatch uh, costume one of the most surreal moments, though, of my entire tenure there was our tram was right by the Psycho House. And uh, so basically yes. where I went to every night was the, you know, the Bates Motel and the, and the house that's up on top of the hill. And we would, before the tram would start every night, somebody would lead a uh, stretching exercise like class uh, complete with music. And he would stand on the porch of the Norman Bates House and like direct this like sea of clowns all doing stretches beforehand and i just remember being like i never thought this would be my life but here i am hey how's it going everybody pardon the interruption here but as soon as we finish recording the episode i realized we did not plug our social media accounts oh no talk about scary so (laughs) i'm gonna do that right now you can follow us on twitter and youtube under another mispro podcast or if you'd like our official twitter url is twitter.com slash mpos official 
probably easier just to remember another miserable podcast, but there it is. You can also find Casey on Twitter at twitter.com slash luchagringo. That's L-U-C-H-A-G-R-I-N-G-O. You can find Chris on Twitter too at twitter.com slash K-R-I-S-P-I-S-T-O-L-E. And you can find my personal Twitter account also, uh, twitter.com slash earth to Zach. So earth, the number two Zach, Z-A-K. I post all the promos for the episodes on that account. Actually, they're retweeted on the main account, but if you'd like to see where they originate, please, by all means, give me a follow there. Uh, But please uh, follow us on our main account, especially, and subscribe to us on YouTube. We're really trying to boost our numbers. I'm also going to start incorporating reviews of some recent horror releases on the uh, main Twitter page. Uh, It's hard to cover everything on the show. So much comes out, so please uh, stay tuned for that. Also, if you really enjoy what we're doing, it'd be a really big help if you gave us a five-star review, rating and review on Apple Podcasts. Uh, We love doing this. We want to reach as many listeners as possible, so please consider uh, giving us a review on Apple Podcasts. And subscribe to us wherever you listen to us, whether it's Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, which we just launched on a few weeks ago. Please subscribe to us that way. As soon as the episode is published, you have it. You have access to it before I even say anything about it on Twitter. So please subscribe to us. Please consider leaving us a review. We'd really appreciate it. We love doing this and we want to do it as long as possible. All right, guys, back to the spooky show. Uh, Pro haunts are, I mean, Universal Studios was my kind of introduction to kind of Halloween haunting. You know, I uh, when it came back in 2006, because it took like five years off after the tax on uh, September 11th. And it came back with the director as I think the main villain. And it was just uh, like the terror tram and like one maze, but I loved it so much. I'd been <laughs> waiting to go. Cause like years and years and years I'd seen my brother bringing back going, you know, in the early two, you know, 2000 and nineties and bringing back these cool programs. And I just sounded so much fun. And I wanted to go. And so when I finally got the chance to go, I was beyond psyched and it was uh, so much fun. And so I've gone not every year, but almost every year since then. I actually have not been to Knott's, which is a shame, (laughs) but I will get there one of these years. Hey, I haven't been to Magic Mountain and it's right next to my house. I don't you know, think you're like, missing much there. I'm, if you work at yeah, Magic Mountain, it, I apologize. I'm sure you were doing a great used, job. Honestly, like 10 years ago, it used to be really awesome and they used to do like high quality makeup and stuff like that, but they kind of lost And we do people. have, we do have that, Chris, you were in a Hayride haunt you mentioned with your theater trip. We do have the LA Haunted Hayride out here, which they're doing a drive through the display this year, but, uh, I, d- I did go on that once, and that was a lot of fun. And the thing I liked about the L.A. Haunted Hayride when I went, like, 10 years ago is that it felt like something that you would see <clears throat> in the Midwest. It felt like, like a small town. Like, it was a pro-quality haunt, but it felt like something you would see in just, like, a little, you know, town in the Midwest. And it didn't feel like L.A., which is what I liked about it. Uh, I do remember the Hayride was really uncomfortable to sit in. <laughs> but it was so cool. <laughs> they gave us, like, ponchos. And I'm like, why do we, like, while you're in line, they give you ponchos. And like, why do we need a poncho? I'm just like, trust us, you're going to need the poncho. (laughs) And they throw like water and shit on you. I don't know if they do that anymore, but it was great. Uh, I love that, man. They also, also in Griffith Park, one thing that I discovered a few years back is they have something called the ghost train. And this is one of my favorite things to go on. And you would, uh, they have like a little Christmas display with this ghost train too, but the uh, it's not called the ghost train when it's a Christmas display, but it's like a little mini train and it like rides around a part of Griffith park and the ghost train, they put up like little Halloween displays and animatronics and you like sit on this, you straddle this little ghost train as it ri- drives around this track. It goes Adorable. through a tunnel. It's like a maybe almost 15 minute experience. It's great. It's just like different <laughs> Halloween displays and it goes from like aliens to like skeletons and, and pumpkins. There is like a, a little shop of horror scene. Look it up on YouTube, the ghost uh, train Griffith park. You will see videos of it. It's fantastic. It hasn't been up the last couple years. Two years ago, they had the ghost train and then across the way in the same stretch of land in Griffith park was Boney Island, which used to be a really epic pro level home hunt that was, I think put on by a writer from the Simpsons, but it was a bunch of animatronic skeletons. And then there was a show with one skeleton who was like a magician. And it was almost like a kind of a, disney level show and they would have like water spurting out and he was like conducting and so they put that up and there was a bunch of different little animatronic exhibits you can look that up that's been gone the last two years too but it should be back next year probably would have been back this year 
if uh, COVID hadn't happened. But Boney Island, it's really great. Um, mm. So adorbs. Um, yeah, guys, I, I love, I love. I love going to Hans, man. It's so much fun. One of these years, probably not next year, but uh, maybe 2022, I'm going to take a road trip to see some of the cool haunts across the country because it's something I've always wanted to do. One of the so most interesting ones, same. one of the most interesting ones I, I went to when I was in college, I remember now, I'm remembering now, is that it was basically advertised as zombie paintball and it was a paintball arena that put up a hayride experience where you were basically on a hayride. They had paintball guns attached to the like the cart you were in and they had actors uh out in the woods covered in like shields obviously because they were gonna be hit with paintball guns but you basically actors as zombies and then you would shoot the zombies with the paintball yeah guns. that's I've, I've heard that yep <laughs> Which, it was hilarious to see all of these like people walking towards the hayride with covered in paint with like shields on them and you can see like obviously like the crotch area is where they're getting shot the most. <laughs> like, I, anytime I hear of one of those haunts, I'm like, why would you sign up to be a zombie that's getting hit by paintballs all night? The pay couldn't be that good. I don't know why you would do that. It might, they, they probably tell you the shields protect everything, and they don't. No. <laughs> paintballs hurt, they were definitely They were definitely a good distance away, though. There were no zombies that were like right near the, the, the cart. So. I was always a lazy yeah. tag over paintball guy. Oh, they yeah, probably too. have the guns tuned down to the lowest possible setting, but they yeah. still hurt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it was definitely hard to aim with those, I remember. Like, you didn't okay, you, you guys. get a lot. So I know we're running a little low on time here because someone has to go to work. <laughs> Let's talk about Halloween costumes. What what are our, what was our costume game like growing up? Do you guys still dress up now? It's an important, very important part to Halloween. Obviously, Chris, you dressed up you know, for uh, when you work at Universal as a scare actor, but like your regular Halloween costumes growing up as a kid, what did you kind of, uh, did you drop, did you do scary stuff? Did you do funny stuff? Was it a mix? I mean, when I was a kid, I definitely went for just like the cool, like, you know, what do I want to dress up as, as a, as a rambunctious little, little toddler. So I, I was a, uh, a, a, uh, power ranger one year. Cause I wanted to be a fucking, I wanted to be the fucking blue power ranger. Um, I was a Power Ranger multiple times. <laughs> to, I, a Red Ranger. To my everlasting shame, and this was a result of Batman Forever coming out and me seeing in the theaters and really liking Batman Forever, I was Robin one year for Halloween. Nice. <laughs> uh, complete with like a plastic like ab chest that you could put on the front <laughs> of that costume. But as I got older, you know, I started to do, I started to get more into like the scary costume. So. I think I was Ghostface from Scream one year. I was Michael Myers one year. And then kind of once I got that Michael Myers costume, that was kind of when it transitioned over for me from trick-or-treating to scaring people. So Mm -hmm. I kind of made it a tradition to be Michael Myers for like three or four years in a row. And then once you become an adult and you get a lot more nerdy, you start to go more deep into the cosplay. So I, I was Doctor Who for a couple of years after I got my Doctor Who jacket. Uh, which I still fucking own because it's a it's a badass jacket. And then now this year I'm doing my first. Better than that guy's costume in Funhouse. <laughs> oh God, that guy sucked so hard. <laughs> Fuck that guy. Didn't even try. No, I got my official Doctor Who jacket from uh, uh, Geeky Tees in in Burbank. That has oh, a lot yeah. of great. Still, has still like open, a lot of guys. great. Um, Check it out. Has like a lot of great Doctor Who material. Um, and then this year I'm doing my first uh, adorable couple's costume we're going as uh, matching skeletons oh i know my big one was freddy growing up uh i had a really good freddy mask that wasn't the officially licensed one which actually kind of sucked uh it was one that this store magic world in chatsworth that sold a lot of masks um they i think they had it made uh the highlight of it was it had an open mouth with these plastic teeth on it so you could stick your tongue out and look like really gross, like that, and and the teeth <laughs> would move. It was great, and because uh, they were like each individually put on, um, it was a great mask. Uh, I'm sure I can find some pictures of it to tweet, but uh, a lot of kids were Freddy that year because this was 1988. This was like Dream Warriors time, and uh, I was the only kid that had seen the movies pretty much. Uh, most of the other kids didn't. 
Um, but most of the other kids had the official Freddy mask, uh, which was kind of crappy. You could see it. It came with a hat. The hat looked kind of stupid. Um, we all had the same glove. There was the official glove, and the glove was tremendous. Some kids, their parents went a little creative and got them the Freddy makeup kit that looked terrible. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So it was kind of cool because I was king of the Freddies. My my sweater wasn't very accurate. I could only find a red and black striped one, but it was close enough. I'm sure uh, you were definitely and, the tallest Freddy. In second grade, maybe not so much. I just had a really big... <laughs> I just had a really big fucking head because I had a mask for adults, you know? So it was like, yeah, if you see the picture, my head looks huge oh, because man. of this mask. And, uh, it, but yeah, I, I went from Freddy to Jason, uh, the next year. So this is like third, fourth grade. And I, you know, I did vampires and I've done, a, I, I've gone back to the Freddy mask a lot because and it you, was just you an were awesome hardcore mask. right away. <laughs> yeah, I, I was I was really into the stuff already, so I would I would get pretty into it. It's I remember how, being Jason. Hmm. I was just say it's interesting how like most Freddy costumes go for the Freddy mask over just like a makeup situation because that makeup is so intricate mm -hmm. and detailed. It would take you it would take you forever and be way more expensive and tiresome rather than. I do gotta say though. There is a Freddy Collegeville or Ben Cooper costume. I forget who made it out of the two, you know, with the string in the back. Yeah. And nobody went that shitty with the Freddy costume. <laughs> but I've heard that one's actually like super rare. Like uh, that didn't get around that much. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's the shittiest Freddy costume available and it's probably the most valuable because it's so hard to find now. <laughs> um, it, I think it actually might've been Ben Cooper. Uh, so if you look that up, you'll see what I'm talking about. You know, the one with the vinyl smock and the mask. Uh, and, uh, I, I definitely, I, I remember being Jason and going through an entire tube of fake blood. Uh, and then having to get all of that off and it just being like a pain and then my arms were like so stained with it once it went off because fake blood stains your skin oh, all it the does. time. It does. And I was covered in it and it was so hard to get off. Um, but yeah, I remember, I remember being Freddy a lot. Like one year I was biker Freddy. One year I was uh, hippie Freddy with a tie dyed shirt uh, I just kept reusing that mask because it was so dope. And uh, I tried trick-or-treating as long as I could. I was so tall that I got a lot of shit for it by the time <laughs> I was in middle school. Uh, so, yeah, I think I stopped in ninth grade as a result. Or I'd still be fucking doing it. I love trick-or-treating. Um, but, yeah, I wear costumes a lot uh, still. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing this year. I wanted that giant inflatable Andre the Giant costume, but it's just not practical and no one will see it right now. So um, you guys come up I, with some I need COVID. a plan B. Have you guys come up with some COVID safe plans for Halloween yet? A bit. No. I mean, uh, it's, it's still a work in progress, but I, I have some stuff. And I will say, guys, for the promo for this episode, which you've already seen. Well, actually, you won't have seen it yet, but I will be dressing up somewhat. So, <laughs> uh, but my awesome. <laughs> uh, what he's doing is, uh, if you've seen Silence of the Lambs, uh, Zach is uh, Zach did the Buffalo Bill scene. I am not uh, doing the, the Buffalo tuck. Bill scene. <laughs> okay, I'll do it. You, you twisted my arm. <laughs> Time to show off that new sponsorship on my other podcast, Zach. Uh, if you're t if you're tucking, you shouldn't be seeing the uh, those. But um, you know, I did. I did. Ha I was a Power Ranger a few times. I was fortunate I to have pirouettes. my mom did uh, was a makeup artist a bit growing up as my dad was nice. a photographer. And so she would do the makeup. And so she would apply anytime we did prosthetics or stuff. I remember one year, I feel like my brother went more out with the prosthetic stuff than I did, which is a shame, but he was like, we got like a half cyborg, um, makeup prosthetic, uh, looked, like, like the coming, Terminator like coming stuff. out of the skin. It looked really cool. Yeah. And we mm. got that, I believe at shout out to, uh, Toluca Lake. There's a store called cinema Street secrets. Absolutely yeah. legendary store. It is closing this yeah. year and it's really sad. Fuck. Um, that is a store oh, man. that, you know, every like town has kind of their local Halloween commercials. That store had Halloween commercials that would come on at like midnight. And I remember growing up, they scared the shit out of me. If you look and they up, were awesome. look up cinema secrets, um, LA to look like on YouTube. There is, I just saw a 15 minute video of like someone doing makeup on somebody. There might be more to it, but definitely. Do they have any out. of the commercials on there? 
I didn't see one just quickly Damn. when I set my YouTube search, yeah. but I, I bet you they're out there. So look up Cinema Secrets on YouTube. It is an absolutely legendary store. That is where I went yeah. to get all my Halloween costumes. It was so cool to go in there. I'm really going to miss it. They've since like remodeled and changed it, and they, they had a little uh, extension. Yes, I do remember this store. They had a little I extension with Halloween decorations and stuff over the last few years, but it wasn't quite the same. But that was the place to go to get costumes. This is before yeah. there's a new store called Halloween Town in Magnolia that has a lot of costumes, but... Where where I used to work actually yeah yeah or Casey used to work but Cinema Secrets is where like Hollywood people would go to get their costumes and makeup done you would have people sitting in chairs getting your makeup done when you went in there it was so cool yeah. and they had these awesome like Cinema Secrets coming to get your costumes <laughs> like at midnight <laughs> and it was they were really creepy because you would see like different makeup come up on the screen like werewolves and stuff and it was like late at night like when you're about to go to bed it's the best yeah and it was so cool. Uh, oh man i'm gonna miss that place but you know growing up i was a big power ranger fan so i was that a couple times my baby costume was a football player because my parents just thought let's put him in a raiders outfit um <laughs> i was a cute. ninja i was a ninja once i was a ninja once <laughs> it's funny to see my costumes compared to my little sister she was like a fairy princess every like or variant every year for like eight years <laughs> yeah and there's one year where i dressed up as the grim reaper and i showed casey this picture and she's my sister is like in like uh casey i think called her la llorona but she was like in a little wedding gown and i'm just like in full like makeup as the grim reaper with like a scythe i think i was the grim reaper one year too zach yeah i was i I was too that was my first scary costume what makes me sad is i was dracula one year because i have like a bit of a natural widow's peak and uh for the halloween parade i don't have a picture of that i'm sure there's a video somewhere i can't find a picture of it but i was definitely dracula i uh, okay no bullshitting you i was actually dracula one year too yeah this is yeah me too were you robin too i was not robin I was Harry Potter before the Harry Potter costumes came out because I was like, we're like the exact age that Harry Potter was when those books came out. So I very much grew up with Harry Potter and I made a Harry Potter costume. Google Collegeville Grim Reaper. The one that comes up under deluxe costume was the one I had as a kid. Uh, And my my friend got so scared of the mask. What is it called? uh, Collegeville uh, Grim Reaper. And uh, my friend was so scared of the mask that I took it off and told people I was a monk instead. That's nice. Uh, Very itchy because while they usually made those smock costumes, this was uh, this was actually like a nice uh, a nice robe. But it was like made out of burlap. It was the itchiest fucking thing ever. (laughs) Did you always ever do the thing trick or treating where you would switch masks to repeat a house? Never, never. never. No. I, I, <laughs> I abided by you. the code. You evil genius. I had a group of friends that were dicks that did that one year, and I feel like I went to one house and felt guilty about it. And Honestly, <laughs> dude, my neighborhood is so many houses so close together. I would fill a, a fucking pillowcase with oh, no I definitely, problem. Yeah, I definitely graduated to the pillowcase. Did you do the pillowcase, Chris? Ah, oh, fuck. I feel like they that our school would give us uh, Halloween bags that they like they were just like special like they said happy halloween on them and it was like they probably were made i think they were made out of this like sort of reflective material so it was kind Those of like are the a best. way to get you a, a way to get safety you, bag like, seen yeah like a safety bag so I remember I used those a lot. I had a bunch of those when your little kid I'm used all about volume. When your little kid used the jack o' lantern, pillowcase is the way to go if you want to get the most candy. But I love the little Halloween yes. looking goodie bags and stuff. Yeah. I like that. Oh yeah, we didn't fuck around. If you had a pillowcase, you were good. But if you had like some shitty pillowcase, like a stupid design, you would never hear the end. Did of you it. get your parents to drive you to like the neighborhood where they give out the good shit, like the big ass candy bars and stuff? No, I was. We were that house <laughs> in my neighborhood, and we still are. Um, but, uh, the thing is my neighborhood has so many houses. We went for volume instead of, we went for quantity instead of quality, if that makes sense. And, uh, in a few hours you could get a lot of shit. Cause there's there, I mean, we could hit 80 to a hundred houses in this neighborhood. That's how, that's how close together. And in, in like a, in like a less than a half mile circumference so yeah. we could we could do some damage too, so i would go out for a long time. yeah 
yeah, we would rest up and we would be like, fuck yeah, dude. And that was like bike riding kid stamina where you rode a bike everywhere so you could last, you know? I was a dead biker one year. Sorry, you said bike riding, so I just... <laughs> I, I, was, I was a dead biker, sort of, because I had my Freddy mask and then biker clothes, so that kind of counts. Uh, yeah, I, I loved the candy then, but we're... Now we're getting some good shit, dude. I did. I did. My mom did drive me, I think at least a couple of years to a different neighborhood. I think in Toluca Lake, because uh, that was the area to go in, in Burbank. They go oh, all out place, in Toluca Lake, man. Yeah. If you're in the, th- they're putting up a lot of cool Halloween displays. If you're in Burbank, North Hollywood, SoCal area, go to Toluca Lake. But uh, yeah, it'll take you like 10 minutes and it'll be. It's weird because like when you go to a different neighborhood and you're a little kid and you're trick or treating. You just kind of, you feel like an outsider, but you feel like you're scoring big and you're kind of just like, <laughs> you're like incognito because yeah. you're like, people don't know you're from a different neighborhood because you're dressed up in a costume. And so it's like, you just feel like you're scoring major. And uh, I do remember one year when I was older going up to a house near me and they had this like a smorgasbord of candy out on their like porch. And I was like, it was so much that you just like, is this a mistake that they just like forget to leave this inside? Because it was like everything like king size candy bars like just a row and of just anything you could want and i just remember like should we do this because this is like unfair (laughs) there's too much here but you know what was your um what was your ritual when you got back with the candy did you like how much did you save how much did you guys eat on halloween night growing up i i didn't eat a lot on halloween even as a kid i hated eating late at night and i still do now uh i'd have a couple pieces you bitch (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know i'd make it last dude i would i would put it in my lunch at school and bring it each day that i would was put my it ritual. all into a drawer and i would just like it i would eat as much as i could that night but for at least like a couple weeks i'm gonna have a candy drawer that i can just like open yeah. up and be like hmm, yes i have some of these right now i tended not to eat the lollipops on halloween night i tried to save those i tried to just get what was like easily digestible but uh <laughs> i definitely went for it uh yeah, trick or treating. So that, that's, that's Halloween. That's Halloween. You guys. That is Halloween. Yeah, I do want to give a shout out to. It's been a really good year for horror documentaries, but Wolfman yes. Scott Nards is coming out on October twenty seventh. That is the documentary. Oh, can't wait. Directed by yes. Andre Gower, the star of Monster Squad, about Monster Squad and the fandom. It is uh, coming. It's available to purchase, and I think it's coming to video on demand on October twenty seventh. So we'll definitely have. Yeah. A video so for you next don't month. don't be a bitch. Purchase it. That's what we're saying. Support this movie. Yes. Um, yeah, guys, I know this has been a crazy year. Uh, and Halloween may not be exactly what it usually is, but there are ways to have fun. Just make sure you're safe. Make sure you're wearing a mask. If you're going out to look at new cool displays, be socially distant. Uh, be safe for others as well as yourself. And have fun. It's uh, And remember, Halloween is inside you. <laughs> yes. It's what you and make no it. Pandemic it definitely can take that away is. from you. Yes, Halloween is what you make it. Enjoy. Happy Halloween, everyone. I feel, I feel like you're about to give the uh, the Doc Brown speech. Your life is what you make of it. So your future is what Marty, you make of it. So make it a great one. Marty, I'm a creepy old man that hangs out with teenage boys, Marty. I was thinking oh. more of the Joe Dirt reference. <laughs> oh, what you make it. <laughs> like to see homos naked? I'll send you back in time so having sex with you is legal, Marty. Oh. Oh, gosh. And stay tuned, guys, because we have a commentary coming for you at the end of this month before Halloween. Ah! Yes. Yes, it is going to be the Care Bears Christmas. I hope you Woo! enjoy it. And with that, happy Halloween, everybody. Happy Halloween. Woo! Woo!